Okay, so in this video, I want to talk about an example from an FAA written test question on E6B that is a little bit tricky. So in this example, the FAA is going to give you a heading, a resulting ground track, a true airspeed, and a resulting ground speed, and ask you to determine where the winds are coming from. So usually with an E6B problem, you're going to be given the winds, and then you end up finding a wind correction angle and a ground speed as a result of your E6B calculation. But this question is a little bit tricky because they're asking for the wind, so we're gonna have to work backwards on our E6B, which I'll show you how to do. So here's the question, we'll use an example. If a true heading of 115 degrees results in a ground track of 110 degrees, a true airspeed of 120 knots results in a ground speed of 108 knots, the wind would be from where? Okay, so we have a true airspeed that's more than our ground speed, so our ground speed is less, so we know that we have some sort of headwind. Uh, we can get a general idea there. Um, and then our true heading and a ground track. What is a ground track? So let's get into that. So the first thing we need to do is understand what the question is giving us. So again, they gave us a true heading. A ground track, which is going to be a true course, and I'll explain why we know that here in a sec. And then a true airspeed and a ground speed. So ground track is really what ATC and GPS systems use as your aircraft's actual path along the ground. Ground track is either a true course or a magnetic course, depending on where you look. Since the question gives us no chart or no information on magnetic variation, which would allow us to compute a magnetic course, we can assume that the ground track is not a magnetic course, but rather a true course. You know, since they gave us a true heading, true airspeed, and winds are usually a assumed true on the FAA written unless stated otherwise, then we can assume that they're going to give us a true course because they did not give us magnetic variation to calculate from a magnetic course. So we know that to get from a course to a heading, we add our wind correction angle. So our true heading is 115 degrees and our ground track or true course is 110. So the difference is 5 degrees. This is our wind correction angle. More specifically, the wind correction angle is plus five because when we go from a course to a heading, we add the wind correction angle. So our true course is 110. So if we were doing a normal E6B calculation, we'd have a true course, and then we would add or subtract our wind correction angle. So we're saying 110 plus X equals 115. So if we solve for X, X is five degrees. So we know our wind correction angle is plus five degrees. So that means our little mark, you know, on our E6B is going to be to the right side of the center line, uh, five degrees off for our wind correction angle. So now we have a little bit of an idea of where that's going to be, which is going to help us. Now all we need to do is our E6B procedure in reverse. So let's do that now. Okay, so how do we work backwards on our E6B to get the, the answer that we want? So here's a really cool tool that I'm using from the University of North Dakota. If you Google E6B, online E6B emulator, this will pop up as like the fourth search result. It's a really cool tool. You can move it around. You can make the wind marks and all that stuff. And you can even do this side of the E6B. So it's a really, really cool tool. Okay, so we know that the wind correction angle was 5 degrees degrees right plus five degrees so that's going to be this line over here on the right side and then we also know that we read our ground speed from this middle grommet of our e6b so what we can do is we can slide this to our ground speed of 108 so if we slide the grommet to 108 that's where we know we're going to end up in this question so we want to work backwards so let's start at the end and then work backwards so if you look up here uh, we just did step five ground speed reads under center so if we're working backwards we want to slide our wind velocity mark to our true airspeed but before we do that we want to make sure that our wheel is spun to the correct location so that would be step three so set true course under the true index so that's the last time we spin the wheel, right? Because our wheel starts uh, on the winds, the true winds, and then we, we make our wind velocity mark, and then we turn it to our true course. 
and then and then we end up sliding it to our true airspeed. So we're working backwards, so let's put the grommet back in 108. So we want this to be on our true course. So our true course or our ground track was 110 degrees. So let's put our true index at our ground track or true course of 110 degrees. Okay, now we can do step four, which is slide the wind velocity mark to true airspeed. We won't slide because we've already slid it to where we want it to be, the grommet on 108. So what we have to do is we just have to find the arc for 120 degrees and where the intersects with plus five degrees. So that's going to be about right there. So this is as if we, you know, we had our wind velocity mark here. We slid it, you know, till the true index was under our true course of 110. And then we slid our red dot to our true airspeed of 120. And then we read under the grommet a ground speed of 108 and a wind correction angle of plus 5. So now to get our winds, all we have to do is spin the wheel until the wind velocity mark is on the center line. And then we can read the winds off as um, from a direction of about 156 at a speed of about, what's that, 15 knots. So let's see if this makes sense with the problem that we were given. So again, 15 knots from 156. So if we go back to the problem, we're traveling on a ground track of 110 degrees or a true heading of 115 degrees after a wind correction angle. So ground track, true heading of about 115 degrees, and a true airspeed of 120 knots resulting in ground speed of 108 knots. So we know because our ground speed was reduced by 12 knots that we have a significant headwind component. So if we're traveling on a heading of 115 degrees, wind from 155 at 15 to 16 knots would give us a pretty decent headwind. You know, it's about 40 degrees off to our right from that the wind direction would be at 15 knots and so yeah that makes sense that it would be about a 12 knot headwind reducing our ground speed to 108 so wind from 155 at 15 knots is the answer